Four calls, cause number 17123, Department of Family Protective Services versus Brianna Samson and Eddie Menchaca in the 216th Judicial District Court of Gillespie County, Texas. It says the Child Protection Court of South Texas. The time is 1.35 p.m. The parties and all is observing our admonish these proceedings are official being recorded by the court. Mr. McKeska, would you please begin the announcement? Drink McKeska, attorney for the department. Jennifer Simmons, family-based caseworker. Honor Swallow, attorney ad litem for Eddie Mitch. Irene Acosta, attorney ad litem for Brianna. Indra Sims, attorney ad litem for the child. Okay. We are here for a progress hearing that the court set. I had ordered a conference. Um, neither parent was in compliance as of January the 26th. Where are we today? What, what does the department wish to do, Mr. McKeska? Uh, Judge, that, that conference was held yesterday. Um, and based out, off of the outcome of that conference, the department is asking to dismiss the case today. Okay. Um, any objection to the department's request to dismiss? No objection. No objection, Your Honor. No, oh, Your Honor. All right. Um, Mr. McKeska, do you feel the need to put on any evidence? I don't believe so, Judge. This case wasn't filed under Chapter 161. Um, so I think it was just more of a formality of showing up today and, and informing the court of the outcome of yesterday's staffing. Okay. All right, then. Um, I appreciate you all having that staffing and the court has heard the department's motion. There's no controverting motion on file. The, par the parties agree, so the court will grant the department's motion to dismiss this suit. There will be no further hearings. Thank you all for your time and your service. All parties are excused. Judge, it Thank took them longer to get Carly out of school than they expected, and so they're still in transit back to the location to get on Zoom. Do you want me to have her call in? How long do you think it'll be before she's Let me here? ask. Okay. How long do you think it'll be? You, Your Honor, I see an Odell 17G. Could you please check to see if that's my client from the jail? They said five to seven minutes, Your Honor. All right. We'll stay in recess until then. Um, Ms. Hellrung, I had that person on earlier and was trying to get them to communicate with me. Uh, the Odell 17G, could you please hit star six to mute? Star six to mute or to unmute, excuse me. Do you have your client's number? Um, actually, he's at the jail. Let me call the officer and just confirm that's, that's him. Um, so I'm just going to mute myself and I'll call him right now. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. Um, Mr. Odell, they are in recess um, until the child um, is able to confer with the court. Okay, so you're just going to stand by um, and stay muted. Okay. Okay. Ms. wrong. your client was booted out, I guess, and then came back, but it's still not connected to audio. Okay. So uh, we'll just deal with that as we can. Um, okay. I want to go ahead and case and then have the conference with the child. Ms. Freeman, are you ready? Yes, Your Honor. All right, thank you for being here. Court calls cause number CVPC-23-3, Judicial District Court of Bandera County, Texas. This is the Child Protection Court of South Texas. The time is 2 18. Tyler Green, would you please begin the announcements? And if each attorney would please prompt their client to announce, that would be helpful. Obviously, Ms. Hellrung, you're not going to be able to get Mr. Um, Odell to announce at this point in time. Go ahead, Ms. Kyler Green. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Good afternoon. This is um, Emily Kyler Green for the uh, department and uh, Ms. Gonzalez, if you could announce, please. Taylor Gonzalez. I'm the family-based caseworker. Uh, Floyd L. Lamro, attorney law. I have here Odell, Diane Odell, who is the grandmother of Carly. Please tell me your name. 
Kathleen Savage. I was appointed for the biological mother, Christy LaFleur. Um, Cecilia Howard, on behalf of um, Kevin O'Dell, he's present, still trying to connect to audio, but I am ready. Jennifer Miss, Harris, attorney item for the child. Carly, can you unmute and see your name for the judge, please? Um, what did I say? Just I say your name. Curly. Thank you. You can put it back on mute. Leah Peterson, Hill Country Casa case supervisor. Thank you. Your Honor, um, if I could just have my client, Mr. Odell, can you please announce your name for the record? Kevin Odell. Can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Jill Winger, Hill Country Casa, guardian ad litem for the child. Mr. Baca, did you announce? Uh, Ernesto Baca, covering uh, FBSS supervisor. Ms. LaFleur, if you could please unmute. It's star six if you're on the phone. Uh, Christy LaFleur. Do you have the ability to turn on your video? Yes, sir. All right, I'll need you to keep that on and I'll need you to keep your device still, please. And Mr. Lamoureux, the woman who's with you, could you please unmute and have her announce? I'm Diane O'Dell, the grandmother. Thank you, ma'am. All right, anyone who's not an attorney or will be giving testimony, I need you to raise your right hand, please. Gotcha. First things first, the attorney for Mr. Odell, Ms. Hellrung, and Mr. Odell have requested the court meet with Carly and pursuant to the Texas Family Code, the court will have that meeting. They've also requested a record of that meeting. So at this time, I'm going to create a breakout room. And in that breakout room will be myself, the CASA advocates, Ms. Harris, and Ms. Freeman. Ms. Freeman will take a record of the meeting. However, nobody else will be allowed in that interview at this time. So I'll create that room now. All right, Ms. Freeman, just let me know when you're ready. I'm ready, Your Honor. Okay. All right, pursuant to the motion, the court had the uh, interview with Carly, and a record was made of that interview. At this point in time, uh, the court is, uh, my understanding from the information that was provided to me is that um, department is seeking a joint managing conservatorship with the father? Not at this time, Your Honor, no. The okay. department has filed for a removal um, with further information that was gathered after um, in, a, in a, an effort for, in, in an effort to prevent the removal had offered that to the father, but um, we don't think it's appropriate at this time or that it's even something that the father would, had, had stated that he would desire. Okay, so you're seeking, the department is seeking to be named as a temporary managing conservator? That is correct, Your Honor. All right. Before we begin the proceeding, are there any housekeeping issues we need to take up? Um, yes, Your Honor. So uh, just for purposes of, of service, um, the request for service for the father has gone out, but due to his incarceration, there is um, a delay in that. So the department's requesting that the court find um, him to have appeared today and waive the requirement of the department from having to serve him. Um, additionally, since the filing of this lawsuit, it has been determined that the biological mother in this case, um, Christy, um, and I, I, I I think I thought her name was uh, Walter, but it's, I think it's now LaFleur. Uh, she does, her rights have, were terminated about 12 years ago. Um, 
but she was she was named as a party of the lawsuit before we knew uh, the the actual definitive grounds of that. Okay. Um, have you shared the information of the private prior termination with all the parties? Yes, Your Honor. All parties should have received a copy of that. I, I believe it was Ms. Harris who initially originally found it, but it has been shared with everyone. All right. So is there any objection from the court excusing Ms. LaFleur from the hearing? No objection, Your Honor. No objection, Your Honor. Um, on the same token, the grandmother, as far as I know, does not have any kind of conservatorship um, and has not filed an intervention that I'm aware of. However, I'm not opposed to her being here to listen or possibly be called as a witness, but not participating. Okay, that was my next question. We'll get to that in just a moment. So there's no no objection that I hear to the court. Uh, excusing Ms. LaFleur. Ms. LaFleur, thank you for appearing here today. I do appreciate your cooperation. Based on what I'm hearing from the parties, your attendance is not required. And I thank you for your time and sorry to have disrupted your day. You are excused. Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, I presume I am officially discharged. Yes, that would also mean that Ms. Savage, who was appointed to represent Ms. LaFleur, is also dismissed in her duties and is no longer required to participate. Thank you for being here, Ms. Savage. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, if I may, um, I am not sure whether or not um, Ms. Odell has filed an intervention. Um, when I filed my motions, um, I did find that Mr. Lamoureux had himself entered as intervener's counsel. So I'm not sure whether that got filed or not, but it was my understanding that was the intent. All right, Mr. Lamoureux, do you know if, well, you would know, did you file an intervention? Yes, Your Honor, the intervention was filed and accepted by the court clerk. Okay. Mr. Lamoureux, this is Shara Greenlee, the court coordinator. I need a copy of that. If you could please send that to me, um, the filed copy, I'd appreciate it. And Your Honor, I don't, I don't believe that I received notice of that, so I would object to an appearance today being made as an intervener. I don't, I don't object to to Miss Odell being present as a potential witness, but in terms of her being an intervener, I had no knowledge of this. Your Honor, I don't know if any of the parties received that notice. I did not either. May it please the court, Your Honor, I filed into the case. Uh, I don't know what I needed to do otherwise. I didn't have, coming from the outside and not having any information on any parties, I couldn't file a, uh, a complimentary so I, my assumption was that by filing in the case and the parties that were not, noted there, that they would receive notice of this. I will correct that, Your Honor, but the intervention has been filed and um, accepted by the clerk. What was the filing date? Filing date was... Yeah, uh, the filing date was yesterday, Your Honor. Okay. And it was accepted. You, you. Uh, if you want an exact time of when it was accepted. Well, I, I want to know if when you filed it yesterday, you selected to serve notice on the parties. I see that's it. I believe I did, Your Honor. Okay. Well, because it was filed yesterday and parties are representing that they have not received notice of it. Um, technically, an intervention is valid until it has been struck. Uh, in this case, what I will allow is for um, you and Miss Odell to uh, be here today. She may be called as a witness um, just because of, of notice issues. Uh, I know it's, it's, if it was filed yesterday, <laughs> There's a pretty good chance nobody was even aware of it. Um, I don't think that the attorneys would have had time to prepare um, for an intervener in this case. So I'll allow you to be here 
and to participate uh, to the extent that she may be called as a witness and to observe. Um, I probably am not going to allow you to ask questions at this point in time, but I'm not opposed to um, taking that up as it comes, depending on what the circumstances are as we get into this hearing. Um, Your Honor, I please the court. The filing yes. was accepted this morning at, um, I had the time there, 11 a.m., 11, 8, 11 a.m. Okay, so there's a good chance that uh, that was three hours and 40 something minutes ago. There's a good chance that the notice hasn't even gone out to the other parties yet. If they're just, just accepted it, uh, they, I they may sorry. not have accepted it yet. May please the court at eight o'clock, 11, 8, 11 a.m. at eight this morning oh, okay. was accepted. Okay. All right. Um, any other housekeeping issues that we need to take up? Okay, then you may proceed. Call your first witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the department calls um, Taylor Gonzalez, please. She's been sworn. You may proceed. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Gonzalez, um, let's start with your role in this case. When did you get assigned? I was assigned this case in November of 2022. And what is the title of your role? I am the family based safety services worker for this case. Can you um, can you explain to the court who the parties are specifically? Uh, for the case, the parties would be uh, Miss Diane Odell, um, Father Kevin Odell, and Carly Odell. Okay, and Diane Odell is the paternal grandmother. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and as you you heard before, she's she's not actually a party, but she's a she's a the grandparent to Carly. Yes. Okay. What is your understanding as to her role in Carly's life? She has been a caregiver to Carly for almost her entire life. And does she have, to your knowledge, any um, any legal rights to Carly? No. Um, Mr. Odell, what is his status? He is currently incarcerated in Bear County Jail. Okay. Do you know how long, for how long he's been incarcerated? I believe he's been incarcerated since October of 2022. And uh, do you have um, do you have any idea as to an expected release date for him? Um, I do not anticipate him to be released anytime soon. Okay. okay. Let's begin with the allegation uh, that uh, that began this case. When did that first come in? Uh, the intake was received on October thirtieth. And what was the Oh, excuse me. I didn't mean to interrupt you. You said of twenty twenty two. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what was that allegation? The uh, Department of Family Protective Services received a report stating that uh, Carly and paternal grandmother Diane O'Dell were in a physical altercation and law enforcement responded. Uh, Carly and Diane were pushing each other. Carly was on the ground kicking and screaming. Diane had punched Carly. Carly was observed to have an injury from this. She was observed to have red marks and swelling to her face. CPS was then contacted for immediate assistance. So what, uh, what was CPS's next um, step after returning uh, or after receiving this intake? Uh, the um, Child Protective Services investigator went out to the home um, to obviously observe the home as well as speak with Carly and Diane. Um, it was kind of determined that um, Diane was acting in self-defense because Carly was the initial, in, in, uh, excuse me, the aggressor in the altercation. And then the case was referred to family-based services because there have been so many previous referrals for the same reason. Okay. And when it was, when it was referred to family-based services, is that when you got uh, involved? Yes, ma'am. Okay. When you got involved in this case, um, did you review the record that had been created prior? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and why do you do that? Um, so I can get a full history of obviously the involvement with the caregivers, what services have been previously referred to the family, what types of interactions the parents have had with the children, protective capacities, et cetera. Okay. Um, were you able to actually review those records? Yes. Okay, and at this point in time, are you deemed the custodian of those records? Yes, ma'am. Um, 
Do you know the date that um, the actual family-based case was opened after the referral? Yes, ma'am. It was opened on November 18th, 2022. Okay. So what was the first step um, with the family-based case to help this family? Uh, my first um, step with any family is to have an initial visit with the family, and that's typically done with myself as well as the investigator. So um, myself, Carly, Diane, and the investigator, Amy Jackson, all met, uh, and that was um, in November 2022. Okay. Um, did you go to the actual home that they were living in? Uh, that I did go to the home. I saw them in the home in this, on December 8th, 2022 for the first time. You had previously had, um, before you actually went to visit the home, though, you you had um, set up meetings, uh, like a family strengths and needs assessment, though? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What's the point of doing that? The family strengths and needs assessment um, is essentially an assessment that will help me determine what needs and strengths the family has, but will also allow me to determine what services I can refer the family to, um, to better um, ensure that the children's needs are met and that they're safe. Do you recall who was present at that meeting? Um, for that uh, initial assessment that was completed, I met with Diane at the Bandera Public Library. Um, Carly was also present, and my coworker Sam Winky was there, and she was um, kind of keeping Carly busy so I could have a full interview with Diane. Okay. What were the results of the FSNA? So I use that FSNA to create a family plan of service and the family plan of service, the services I asked Diane to participate in was a psychosocial assessment and engage in individual therapy. That therapist, her name is Lucia Cobb. And I also wanted Diane to seek any applicable government assistance program like food stamps and TANF that would help her financially. Did you create a family plan of service for the father? There was a family plan of service, or excuse me, there was not a family plan of service uh, created for Mr. Odell. Why not? Um, he uh, did not uh, want to work services and felt that Carly and Diane were fine, just the two of them. Okay. Were you, uh, was he present at this time or was he already incarcerated? He was already incarcerated. Okay. Um. You mentioned seeking applicable government assistance programs. Can you be more specific on what programs um, Ms. O'Dell was uh, recommended to look into? Yes, ma'am. So um, we have a HHS office located here. So I'm aware that some of the programs that Ms. O'Dell would be eligible for would be like um, food stamps, so the SNAP program, as well as an emergency TANF fund and possibly Medicaid. Um, I don't get to make those determinations, but that's typically what I refer my families to. Okay. Did you um, help her get in the right direction? Yes, I had transported her to the office and she was able to fill out the packet. Okay. Let's talk about the home visit. Um, you said that you, you did your initial home visit on December 8th? Yes, ma'am. Can you please describe the physical exterior of the of the um, of the home? Yes, ma'am. The um, home is located um, in a in a rural area, and it is a property that is full of, for lack of a better term, junk. There is like a trailer, a mobile home trailer that's not being lived in at this time. There's also two um, RVs in the front of that trailer. One is Kevin's, from what I've been told. The other is Diane's, where Diane and Carly resided. Um, the property has miscellaneous objects. Um, there's chairs, plastic bins, I mean, broken down tents, um, empty luggages. Um, inside the trailer, there are boxes full of belongings. Um, well, hold on, let me, let me separate there. I don't want you to go inside the trailer yet. Okay. Um, is there a concern for safety with the clutter and the junk outside? Yes. Why? Um, I have gone to the home several times outside and there have been um, kind of dangerous objects outside, especially given the circumstances of this case. I have found a knife um, that Carly could have accessed at any time, as well as broken glass shards um, along the property. Okay. Uh, so I interrupted you a second ago when you were describing the inside of the home. Could you please describe that? 
In the small RV where Diane and Carly reside, it is two bedrooms. Um, the primary bedroom where Diane and Carly slept together, they slept in the same bed. Um, the bed's large, but the room is small. So you nobody can walk alongside the side of the bed. Um, in order to even get onto the bed, you have to crawl from the foot of the bed onto the bed. Um, in the living room area, there's only one seat there. That was Diane's seat. Um, the other benches and the tables just had miscellaneous belongings, boxes, containers where you, you can't sit down. Um, the additional bedroom has two bunk beds. Um, one bunk bed is again, full with belongings where no, you can't sit or lay down. The second one did have a space for Carly where she could lay down. Um, the top bunk of that one you cannot lay down in there, um, but it was very difficult for just two of us to even walk around in that RV. And I've never been inside the RV in a comfortable position with me, Carly and Diane. It's either me and Diane in the RV or like Carly and I, or Diane or Carly and Diane in the RV. Can you describe uh, the smell? It uh, smelled heavily of urine. And what about uh, the status of the electricity in the home? There was electricity to certain areas of the RV when I first visited that day. Um, there was no central heat to the RV. They did have um, a plug-in warmer, a heater that they use occasionally. Um, they did have running water, but they did not have a water heater because it ran by electricity and propane, which we later found out. So my initial visit, there was no heat um, and only partial electricity to the RV. Okay. What about uh, flushable toilets? No. Mr. Odell, I need you to watch your reactions, please, sir. Yes, sir. I just, it's not, that's not all true. That's why it's right. upsetting me. You'll get, you'll, you and your attorney will have the opportunity to cross-examine the witness, but I just need you to remember we're in court and watch your reactions, please. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Carter. Yes, sir. Thank you, Honor. At the time that you um, did a home visit, did you um, speak to Ms. Odell uh, directly about the condition of the home? Yes. And uh, did you make any recommendations? Yes. Um, I advised that CPS may be able to assist with purchasing like some type of storage unit that we can place outside of the home, like a shelving unit or something like this, where we can physically remove those boxes that are in the seated areas as well as in the bunk beds so that Carly and Diane could have separate bedrooms and separate sleeping spaces and kind of establish those um, boundaries between the two of them. But because Carly's emotional and mental needs were a priority, that was never accomplished. A priority to you? To both myself and Diane. Okay. Um... After this home visit, what was your next step in your um, attempt to help? Um, so the department uh, then met with um, Mr. Odell while he's while he was incarcerated at Bear County. Okay, was this a courtesy worker? This was. Um, to your knowledge, had there been any plans that Mr. Odell had made for Carly's care upon his um, entrance into incarceration? The only plan that Kevin had that I'm aware of is he signed power of attorneys for Carly's medical and education um, consenters. He also informed the worker that um, his sister, Cheryl Moose, had shared guardianship and could make any decisions for Carly that Diane could not. So no legal rights were 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 actually uh, turned over? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, was there a discussion about his, um, any, any concerns that he had on Carly's situation? Yes, he did express several concerns during that visit. Um, most importantly, that he never wanted objection, his mom. Objection. I'm going to, on basis of knowledge, if she's relaying what the courtesy worker told her, that would be hearsay. Ms. Gonzalez, is this part of the, the case record? Yes, ma'am. And is this the same case record that you relied on that you're the custodian for? Yes, ma'am. And these are admissions by a party opponent? Yes, ma'am. 
overrule. Go ahead, you can answer. So during that visit, Mr. Odell informed the courtesy worker that at no point did he want his mother to have any type of guardianship over Carly. He expressed that Carly is not the aggressor in the physical altercations between Diane and Carly, that actually his mother is the aggressor. He told the courtesy worker that um, previously Diane had taken a steroid, which made her, which made her act crazy. Um, and that she becomes um, aggressive when she takes that. He also shared that she is uh, mentally unstable and was she? prescribed a medication. Sorry, sorry. You say she uh, is Diana mentally is mentally okay. Diana is mentally unstable and has history with previous um, antidepressants, but that the antidepressants made her sleepy, so she stopped taking them. And because she stopped taking those, we're seeing these altercations between Diane and Carly. Okay. Um, to your knowledge, were there um, any concerns on Carly's educational needs that Mr. Odell had? Mr. Odell did not want Carly to attend school because he was scared that she would get re-exposed to COVID and thus expose Diane in the home. And since Diane was the primary caregiver and she has pre-existing conditions, if she were to get sick and hospitalized or die, there would be no one to watch Carly. Okay. So just so I, uh, just so I understand, Mr. Odell believed um, that Miss Miss Odell, uh, his mother, was the aggressor um, of the, the physical altercations between her and Carly. Yes, ma'am. And that is who he left uh, in charge of Carly when he became incarcerated. Yes, ma'am. Are there any discussions as to the conditions of the home um, in terms of safety for Carly? Uh, not during that initial visit, no. Um, so this was uh, December 22nd. What was the next step that you took? So I, uh, after the holidays, went out to the home again um, the, to do a home visit as we are required to do by policy. Um, I wanted to kind of uh, discuss again Carly's educational needs. At this point in time, um, we're in January of 2023, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. What is the status of Carly's education? Carly was not yet in school, and the only type of education, for lack of a better word, is Diane's attempt in having her complete a fifth grade level brain quest workbook. How old is Carly at this time? She is 12. What grade should she be in? Seventh grade. Were you able to review the fifth grade level? Um, what, what, what sort of a book did you describe it as? It's a brain quest um, activity workbook. It has several different subjects, for example, um, math, reading. There were um, problems in there like related to counting money and things like that. Were you able to review that workbook? I uh, Diane did allow me to see the workbook. Okay. Were you able to um, formulate an, an opinion based on your role as a as a caseworker on the progress that was made in that booklet objection as to her basis of knowledge i'm not asking to, that she's an educator your honor but as a family-based caseworker whose job it is to assess the educational safety life needs of a child and she's reviewed the workbook i'm just asking for her opinion on on how it was completed why don't we miss gonzalez just tell me what you saw in the book Yes, sir. So I did see that there were various pages that were filled out by Carly, um, but I could see she sat there and, and tried to work on it when I had a visit that she could not really complete, you know, the assignments that Diane wanted her to. Um, Diane also shared with me that she struggles to have Carly even complete this. They fight on a daily basis for this, for her to do her schoolwork. And that Carly just goes to the answers and copies the answers from the back of the book and writes them into the problem. Uh, to your knowledge, when was the last time Carly was um, enrolled in any sort of school environment? School on January 18th, 2023. I'm sorry. I mean, prior to uh, the department's involvement. 
She was enrolled in school in October 2022, but was then pulled out after 10 days. Were you able to discuss with uh, Ms. Odell the con any concerns you had about Carly's education? Yes, ma'am. And um, did this, besides what you've already testified to about her inability to get Carly to focus and to complete the tasks, um, any future plans on how to address her educational needs? So I had pretty extensive conversations with Diane that Carly has significant educational needs. We knew this because she had annual ARDS at her previous elementary schools. I discussed with Diane that the lack of support at home is not enough to meet her educational needs. Diane insisted about uh, getting an ARD set up, so we did have that discussion for her. Um, we could still conduct an ARD even if she wasn't enrolled in school. We also discussed potential online homeschool programs for Carly at Diane's home. However, we discussed obviously with the continued physical altercations, the fact that Carly had a very... Um, strange sleep schedule. She's up all night. She's sleeping most of the day. Um, the fact that she couldn't get her to even do the workbook, I had concerns that any type of homeschooling program was also not going to be adequate for Carly at that We're time. Early January um, at this point on, on the timeline, um, was Carly engaged in any individual counseling? She was. Okay. How did that get set up? Uh, she was referred to a community resource, a free individual counselor through Hill Country Crisis Council um, in a previous investigation. As a result of this allegation? Yes, ma'am. So when we received this referral for this specific case, she was already in therapy. Okay. To your knowledge, um, were there concerns about Carly's safety going back to prior allegations or prior investigations? Yes. Objection if it calls for anything she learned from a third party. Not asking for uh, anything from a therapist, John, or just from the case file. No, sustained. Do you want to repeat the question, Ms. Kyler Green? Um, there are concerns um, from the department's perspective um, about Carly's safety going back to the prior investigations. Okay, Ms. Yes. Gonzalez, let's limit that information to what's in the case file. Okay, I'm. I'm. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. I'm. I'm trying to orient you to the to the reason why she had individual therapy in the first place. Understood. Thank you. Um, what was the point of that individual therapy? The individual therapy was uh, supposed to help Carly establish some positive mechanism uh, coping mechanisms, which would hopefully decrease the amount of altercations in the home. Based on your knowledge of the case at this point, um. Did it appear as though Miss O'Dell was at least attempting to work the um, services that were recommended in the family plan of service? Objection leading. I'll rephrase, Your Honor. What is your opinion as to um, the progress that was being made um, for the services that were recommended in the family plan of service? Um, Diane O'Dell was participating in services at this point at, in early January. In your opinion, was it helping? No, ma'am. Okay, why not? Even though she was engaged in her individual counseling, we still had an increasing number of altercations, even with the case open. So let's let's talk about the subsequent altercations. Um, what was the next uh, incident that you were informed of? Uh, to my knowledge, the first one since the case was open was January 7th, although I believe that there were altercations before then. I just wasn't informed. What's your understanding as to the January 7th altercation? Uh, on January 7th, Carly took Diane's cell phone as well as her uh, car keys. She lock Carly locked herself into the minivan from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. that entire evening. Any idea what the weather was that day? Um, I did look up the weather. It was um, overnight. The lows got to about low 50s that evening. What other incidents are you aware of? There was another um, incident involving Carly Diane when they went to visit um, Diane's friend, Bob Harkins. 
Um, this was about mid January. Objection if it's relying on information from a third party. This information, are you relying on this information from a third party? No, Diane um, reached out to me directly. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so on uh, January 11th, um, I got a string of text messages from Diane requesting assistance. They were at her um, friend's house, Bob Harkins. He resides in San Antonio. Um, basically, Carly was barricading herself in the bedroom and was refusing to leave. Um, Diane and Bob had tried, made every attempt and effort to have her leave at that point and also threatened to call the cops as well as CPS. And Carly was still refusing to leave. Do you know where she was trying to prevent going to? That's a Can you rephrase question. That? I apologize. Um, where did Carly not want to go? She did not want to go back to Bandera. Um, in in these text messages that you received from Diane, how how um, how would you describe Diane's demeanor? Frantic, upset, uh, defeated. Um, at the at this point in time, when you've been in contact with Diane about um, these these various incidents with Carly, um, were you able to speak to Diane about um, uh, uh, resources that are available for Carly? Yes. Um, when I called Diane after she sent that those string of text messages to me, I basically told Diane, you know, this is the reason why we need to get her into um, um, a more supportive therapeutic program, like a voluntary residential program. And Diane basically said, well, when can she go? Diane expressed any concern to you for her own safety when it comes to Carly? Yes. And what was that concern that she had? Diane basically was fearful of Carly and any type of redirection or discipline that instead of um, confronting Carly about a behavior or trying to redirect it, she just let it go. And to your knowledge, the therapy that they were both receiving, was that ideally supposed to address these issues? Yes, ma'am. And did it? No. Um, okay. Um, did you have then a family group conference? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What was the point of that? I coordinated a family group conference to include Diane, uh, Cheryl Moose, which is um, Diane's daughter, Carly's aunt, because I believed at that time that she had some type of guardianship over Carly. Um, it also included our um, education specialist, as well as our well-being specialist. And the purpose of the family group conference was to discuss um, and develop an educational plan for Carly, as well as a therapeutic plan. And um, her therapist, Anna Reed, was also present. Okay. Um, when you say there was the, the attempt was to, um, to discuss educational and, and mental health needs, um, what was the solution or the recommendation that you all came to? The solution after the, the conference concluded was Diane was gonna take Carly to school and enroll her right away. Um, my responsibility was to reach out to those voluntary residential programs to see um, if they have availability and to learn more information so I could provide that to Diane so we can try to get Carly into one of those programs. We also wanted to have Carly complete a psychological evaluation. Okay. Did you reach out to the residential facilities? I did. Okay. Were you able to find any that uh, could take her? None that required her therapeutic level of care. Um, what do you mean by her therapeutic level of care? During the family group conference, um, Anna did state that she was unable to meet Carly's therapeutic needs. Carly was only seeing Anna once a week for therapy. At this point in time, Anna um, was recommending intensive outpatient therapy for Carly. None of the facilities that I work with offer intensive outpatient therapy for a child. Did you look for inpatient therapeutic? The facility? closest facility is uh, Clarity in San Antonio. She would have to have an assessment, um, but that was not the recommendation at that time. So an assessment was not completed for inpatient hospitalization. Okay. Um, after this um, family group conference and the, 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 however, you know, you described how everyone kind of went their separate ways to, to look for um, treatment. Um, were you contacted by um, 
Miss Odell's um, therapist. Objection, yes. Your Honor. It calls for hearsay. Well, Your Honor, I haven't gone to actually the specific statements that were made, but when I do, the the I'm not asking for, I'm not, I'm not soliciting this information for the truth of the matter of what Ms. Cobb recommends, but basically the effect that this, that these recommendations or these, these concerns that the Ms. Odell's therapist has and what it um, led Ms. Gonzalez to do in her efforts to seek a removal, not seek a removal in an effort to help Carly. Your Honor, I think it does call for hearsay because I think the department is trying to establish that um, Ms. Odell's therapist had concerns and that was what led to removal. So they want it in for the truth of the matter asserted. So I would object if they wanted to call her therapist, they should call her as a witness and not try to get that in through the caseworker. It's your so. question she asked is if she had contacted her. She didn't ask her what she said. So I'm going to overrule that objection, but I will give an instruction that Ms. Carly Green, whatever you're going to elicit, along those lines needs to be uh, something that's not uh, something other than hearsay. And if you want to ask questions to get there, showing that you're not asking these questions the, or eliciting this information to prove the truth of the matter asserted, I'll allow you to do that. So you say that Ms. Ms. Cobb, uh, that is the therapist of uh, Ms. Odell, that, that's who yes. contacted you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, she reached out to you? Yes, ma'am. Did you have concerns with the safety of the individuals in the home based upon that conversation? Objection calls for hearsay. Your Honor, I'm, I'm, I'm not asking for the specifics of what was said, but I'm asking for what is the effect that that conversation had on Ms. Gonzalez and what next move she's making in her, in, in, in her role as a family-based caseworker? Overruled. Yes, I had concerns based on the information that was shared with me. And safety of whom? Safety of Diane. I'd like to ask you about Cheryl Moose for a second. You mentioned her a couple times as a potential guardian. What is your understanding as to her status in this case? When I initially met with uh, Diane and, and discussed kind of how she came into care for Carly, it was, I was informed that uh, Christy LaFleur, mother, relinquished her parental rights. And at that same time, uh, custodian or guardianship, those words were interchanged often, were given to Kevin and Cheryl Moose. To your knowledge, uh, did Cheryl Moose have any um, role in Carly's upbringing thus far? She did, yes. Okay. And is it, did you look into whether or not um, Carly could could live with Cheryl Moose? If there I were did, concerns yeah. with safety that, that in, her, in the home that she was currently in? I did, yes. Okay, and what was the result of that um, of that attempt? Cheryl explained to me that objection. You uh, sustained. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Sustained. Um. Oh, well, let me ask you this: from the perspective of the uh, department, is Cheryl Moose an adequate um, placement for Carly? No, ma'am. As this case progressed. Um, what other options did you look for um, for Carly in terms of getting her help? I reached back again to her therapist, Anna Reed, and I wanted to just verify that there were no, if there were any therapeutic options that could accommodate Carly's needs in Bandera so that Diane and Carly did not have to travel to San Antonio multiple times a week for this therapy. Anna Reed confirmed that there's nothing close by, um, and that's why she recommended those voluntary residential programs. Um, I asked Diane if she had any family or friends that could temporarily take in Carly that could accommodate those needs, like in transportation multiple times at San Antonio, and Diane told me that there wasn't anyone. Um, was Diane able to transport her? No. Why not? She said she doesn't have the money for the gas to go to San Antonio multiple times a week. And did you consult with Mr. Odell about um, any ideas that he had as to how to get Carly into these treatments? Mr. Odell denied Carly had a problem 
um, an aggression problem at this time. He did not even want her to be medicated. Were you able to find anyone who could transport Carly uh, to the therapy appointments that you were able to find? Did you receive any names of relatives that you personally reached out to to see if they could help? No. Was the was Mr. Adele able to transport in any sort of or able to assist in any sort of transport? No. Did you um, actually have an ARD meeting for Carly, or did you uh, uh, attend an ARD meeting for Carly? I did. Yes. Why does Carly have an ARD? She has significant delays, cognitive delays. Um, she has been diagnosed with several um, language processing um, disorders. Um, and so the ARD had to be facilitated in order for the school district to be in compliance, but also so they can make sure that Carly is accommodated to meet her educational needs. At this, um, at this specific ARD, do you call the date of it? January 25th. Okay. Um, did you have any concerns about um, Miss Odell's and Carly's appearance when they showed up at the ARD? Yes. Um, when they arrived that day to school, they were late to the scheduled ARD meeting by 45 minutes. Um, the reason that they were late was because Carly locked Diane out of her cell phone. She had to walk down to a neighbor's home to help get the keys and transport uh, transportation to school. Um, the clothes that they were both wearing that morning were the same clothes that they were in the previous day where I had spent all day with them. It was clear to me that neither Carly nor Diane um, showered overnight or that morning. Were there any threats that were made between the two? Carly was upset following that ARD meeting um, because Diane wanted her to be called out of class to unlock her phone so we can, for the third time, reset her passcode on her phone so Carly could not access the phone. When I informed Carly that she was to no longer take grandma's phone, play games on the phone, use the phone without supervision or consent, Carly then turned directly to Diane and said, you can't threaten me about when I can use the phone, when I can't use the phone, who I can talk to. At this point, you've been involved with this family about a month. Um, What's your opinion as to the, the level of the combativeness between the two? It has escalated at that point, the highest I ever saw it. Uh, during that that meeting that we were all three present for, Diane eventually turned to me and said, that's it, Carly's not coming home with me if she can't listen to me. At the conclusion of this ARD meeting, um, were there any recommendations made for Carly? Uh, they wanted additional cognitive testing completed through the school district, and they were planning to regroup uh, within 40 days to ensure compliance of that ARD was done. And are, what did, do you, are you aware if that's been completed or not? It was not because she was removed the following week. Does the department have a plan ahead um, as to ensuring that Carly is able to receive any sort of cognitive um, assistance? Yes. Were you able to discuss um, at, at this point, post January 25th, uh, the concerns that you had with uh, Carly to Mr. Odell? Yes. Based on your conversations, um, did you explain the concerns that the department had? Yes. Okay. Did he seem to have an understanding on that based on your interactions with him? He just denied that the altercations again um, were occurring and that he did not want Carly removed. Is he capable of caring for Carly at this time? No. Is he capable of protecting Carly from Diane at this time? No. Is he capable of protecting Carly from herself at this time? No. Do you have any thoughts as to his recognition or acknowledgement of the concerns that you see about Carly? Yes. What are those? I believe he is not aware of her behaviors because he has not been a caregiver to Carly for a very long time. And I believe he is minimizing the concerns with Carly Um, And I believe in some form he is um, emotionally bullying Diane um, as to her basis of knowledge. Your Honor, she's been involved in this case since the beginning, and I've asked her her opinion on Mr. O'Dell's perspective, 
acknowledgement of the concerns that we have. And it's her job to watch the interactions between families and to assess um, where everyone stands and who's got protective capacity and, and, and who's going to be able to stand up and make sure this child is safe. Your Honor, I'm just objecting to the characterization of my client as a bully unless she has witnessed my client's interaction with, with his mother, Miss O'Dell. I'll sustain that. You can explore it a little bit more if you want, Ms. Kyla Green. Have you had an opportunity to um, to, to uh, witness the interactions um, between Mr. O'Dell and his mother? No. Have you had an opportunity to discuss with Diane um, any concerns or, or fears that she has from her son? Yes. What's your reason for asking her about her relationship with her son? Because Diane, at this point, was the only caregiver to Carly. We had significant concerns. Um, we wanted her to be evaluated to go back into school. But my answer was always, Kevin won't allow me to. Kevin won't consent to this. Kevin won't allow me to take her here, give her medication. I don't want you to go into the full history of uh, Carly's involvement with the department. Um, but can you give the court a brief history as to the generalized history that Carly has had? With, the, with Child Protective Services? Yes. Um, we received, or the, the department's first case with Carly was on January 13th, 2011. We received an intake alleging that the trailer that Carly lives in should be condemned. Um, there is clutter and junk all around the floor. Uh, Kevin O'Dell is using hard drugs and drinking around the baby on a frequent basis. There's also domestic violence. Um, between Diane Odell and Christy LaFleur. Are there, um, there's all um, is there a history of, um, is there a history of physical abuse allegations? Yes. Would you say that's okay. significant? Yes. Um, and how do you take that history and apply it to the current situation, if at all? Knowing that there have been past instances of physical altercations and that they continue to happen currently, I felt that there was an immediate need to escalate Carly's therapeutic care into a residential program as soon as possible. Have you also reviewed um, Mr. O'Dell's criminal history without yes. going into that line by line? Um, would you, how would you describe um, the progression of his criminal history? It is extensive. Um, I would say it starts with some misdemeanor charges uh, related to drug use, and then most recently has escalated to it, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and terroristic threat. And uh, do you I'm see a problem? That it's, he has not been convicted of that. He's just been charged. No, these are understood. These are just charges. This is just the criminal history and what he's been charged with. Mm -hmm. We'll take notice that they're only charges. Based on everything that you had at this point, um, what concerns um, do you have at this point in time that if Carly were, be, were to stay in the home with Miss O'Dell, um, that she would receive any serious bodily injury or harm? I believe if Carly were returned home today that there would be ongoing physical violence between Diane and Carly. What is your opinion as to whether there are services that are pertinent for Carly's um, well-being that, that she's not receiving? She really needs intensive outpatient counseling, and she's not able to get that with Diane. Can you explain to the court um, the reasonable efforts that you feel that you have made throughout the um, your history with this case to prevent a removal? Yes, ma'am. So my first priority was to get Carly into school um, uh, to provide a physical separation between Diane and Carly. My next step was to um, get her situated with therapy. And at that time, I was told that her therapeutic progress wasn't able to be made um, in a weekly setting. I then um, scheduled a psychological evaluation, which was completed for Carly. I attempted to call several facilities to find a residential program where she could become stabilized and then returned home. I asked uh, Diane. Um, and Cheryl about any relatives or family friends that would be able to take in Carly temporarily to help meet these needs. The last effort that I um, 
I attempted to help Carly with was requesting consent from Kevin for a joint managing conservatorship so that the department could assist in finding a residential facility with hopes that uh, she would return home to Diane in a more stable uh, men uh, mental health setting. What was the response to that request for uh, joint managing conservatorship? Kevin said no. And at this time, um, what are you asking the court to grant? I would request that the, uh, the court grant temporary managing conservatorship of Carly. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Ms. Alrum. Yes. Um, Ms. Gonzalez, did you ever actually meet with my client? Directly? No. Okay. So you're relying solely on a courtesy worker. Is that correct? He attempted to call me once, but didn't have money on the phone, so I couldn't speak with you him. You personally never made um, efforts to try to explain to Mr. Odell what was really going on um, based on what you saw? The department made efforts, but I did not visit with him personally. Okay. Um, now, you advised that you did believe at um, one point that a joint managing conservatorship between Mr. Odell and the department was a viable option. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so if the court ordered a JMC versus a TMC, what would be the problem with doing that? Based on the information that I have learned after Carly's removal, I have significant concerns over Diane's mental health and the continuing concerns of safety and the physical altercations between Carly and Diane. You're saying all of this, anything that you have, are directly knowledgeable, or are you relying on hearsay to come to that conclusion? This would also include Objection, my interaction. Your Honor, calls for, calls for speculation. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Let me take that back. She's asking her to make a legal determination as to what hearsay is. She's not an attorney. She can't do that. So I'd ask that the question be rephrased or. Okay. Those concerns. Well, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase those concerns that you had, quote, after the fact regarding Ms. Odell's mental health. It was that based on your direct observation or based on something someone else told you? My direct observations. And what were those direct observations? Throughout this case, um, since I have been working with the family, Diane consistently cries about how she just can't handle Carly and that she loves her and she wants to help her, but she can't do it anymore. Um, she, her emotions swing often in a visit from crying to happy to crying again. Um, I can see that she struggled, you know, putting Carly on a routine, but something as simple as redirecting Carly to give her her phone back, Diane's not able to do because she's fearful that Carly will assault her. Putting the child into a JMC with the father so that she can get into a res residential treatment center would not be an option then? No, because Carly would then have to return back to Diane if she finished her treatment. And I don't feel that Carly is safe there with Diane. Um, Ms. Lavelle, you've got to watch your reaction, sir. I, I understand you may not like what you're hearing, but you watch your reactions and temper them. Go ahead, Ms. Nelro. Um, So they, you could not offer those services um, to Ms. O'Brien in a JMC case? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm confused. Okay, you're saying that you cannot go JMC, you have to go to temporary managing conservatorship, is that correct? It's my understanding that uh, Mr. Odell would have to consent to the joint managing conservatorship, which is why we approached him initially. He then declined that, and that's why we went for the removal. But given Given the information I have today, I do not feel safe moving forward with the JMC because that would mean Carly would return home to Diane and they're not safe there together. Okay. So I'm not really understanding what is the, what are you trying to accomplish with a TMC? Are you saying you do not want this child to return back to her grandmother ever? 
I can't make that determination. Well, no, I'm going to object because returning to the grandmother implies that the grandmother has legal rights in this case, which she doesn't. So it's, I, I think this is confusing for the witness as well. Sustained. All right. Your concern is the fact that the grandmother, Ms. O'Dell, cannot handle the child primarily, correct? There's more to it than that, but that is one concern. Okay. But Ms. Um, Odell was compliant in working the services that you ordered. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And the biggest concern that you testified to was the fact that you could not get Carly into an inpatient, not inpatient, a residential treatment program. Is that correct? That was the biggest concern for this case. Yes. Okay. Is that still the biggest concern for this case? Yes. Okay. So if the judge were to order joint managing conservatorship so that the child could get into a um, residential treatment center, that could be also accomplished through JMC, correct? Yes. Okay. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you, Judge. Where is the dad located? Bear County Jail. So if there were any emergencies or they needed a decision from a parent while Carly was receiving treatment anywhere, would Mr. Odell be readily accessible? No. As far as you know, does Diane have any rights to be able to answer those questions? No. Have you been shown any kind of paperwork that would show that anybody besides Mr. Odell has conservatorship of the child? No, ma'am. Without going into detail, have you been able to review Carly's psychological evaluation? Yes, ma'am. And based upon your review of that evaluation, do you now have concerns about Carly having additional needs that need to be met? Yes. Is a school able to meet those needs alone or more services needed? More services needed. And you mentioned that she was enrolled in school for 10 days in October. Before that, how long had she been out of school? She did complete the 2021 20, to 2022 20, school year, um, but then she, it's my understanding, Diane did not agree with that school, basically pushing her forward to the next grade level. So she then transferred her to her last elementary, ALKEC, and then unenrolled her because of COVID. And you said that you attended the ARD meeting, correct? Yes, ma'am. And at the ARD meeting, do you think that all of the services that the school had set up to meet her needs were going to meet all of Carly's needs or were more services still needed? I listened to the ARD information and the review. I still felt like further information was needed or and services, excuse me. Are you aware of when Mr. Odell might be getting out of jail? There is no pending date. Based upon your review of his criminal history, has he spent much time at home with his daughter? Not to my knowledge. And based upon your conversations with Diane, is she attempting to meet his monetary needs while he's in jail? Yes, ma'am. Is he providing any financial assistance to the family? No, ma'am. Has any family called you about taking... Carly into their home and trying to meet her needs? No, ma'am. You testified that you had not contacted anybody about taking Diane, but have you looked into possible, uh, I'm sorry, taking Carly? Have you looked into any possibilities about where she might go? Um, both Diane O'Dell and Christy LaFleur have provided me several different contacts for people they may they know who may be able to take in Carly. And Christy LaFleur is her mother who previously had her rights terminated, correct? Yes, ma'am. And was she willing to take Carly or did she feel that she could meet her needs? 
She was not able to meet Carly's needs, but did express genuine concern over her welfare as well as her mental health needs and just wants her in a safe placement. And what about Ms. Cheryl Moose that was mentioned um, as possibly having prior custody or providing a home for Carly? Was she considered a suitable placement? No. And why is that? Uh, Miss Cheryl Moose informed me that she has a child who is immunocompromised, so she would not mind taking in Carly, but there was an extensive quarantine process that she and states that needed to be completed for Carly to reside with her. Diane said she could not abide by those quarantine procedures. Um, I then asked Cheryl, if the department was able to assist in, in getting this quarantine process done miraculously, would Cheryl be able to meet her therapeutic needs, um, meaning transporting from her residence to San Antonio several times a week for counseling? Cheryl told me that she's barely making ends meet financially at this point and would not be able to transport Carly on top of meet all of the her own medical needs as well as her children's medical needs. Did you also look into Carly's friend, Misty, and whether placement in that home might be appropriate? Objection if it calls for hearsay. I'm oh. not asking for hearsay. I'm just asking if she looked into it and whether it was appropriate. Overruled. You can answer the question. The home where Misty resides, Carly's friend, is not appropriate for placement at this time. And is that based upon speaking to them or speaking to Diane? I physically went to the property to pick up Carly following that family group conference we have, and it is not appropriate at this time. Has Carly talked to you about where she wants to go? Yes. Do you think that what she wants can safely be accomplished? No. Do you know if Carly's had contact with her father while he's been in prison? A Mr. Odell mailed a letter to Carly in her placement. I don't know how he got the address to her placement, but I know that Diane also has sent a letter and I also did not provide that information. Um, he has attempted contact. I don't believe they've had any phone contact. And do you think that unsupervised, unmonitored contact with Carly is appropriate from either Mr. Odell or Diane? No. If Carly, if the department were given temporary managing conservatorship of the child, what do you think are the very first needs that need to be met for Carly? For therapeutic needs. No further questions, Judge. Let's take a 10 minute recess. It's 3.48. We'll be back at, uh, well, let's just come back at 4.00.